Hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. So your microphone is muted upon entry, but we will uh, unmute your microphone during the open forum in case you have a question or comment. Okay. I hope that is clear. So don't don't worry. Uh, during the open forum, in case you have a question or a comment, we will unmute your microphone. Thank you.
Hi everyone, I'm Sheila CR and before we officially start our webinar, we would like to draw your attention to uh, the reminders flash in the screen. So um, let's go over each uh, item uh, quickly. So your microphone is muted upon entry and uh, don't worry because we will unmute, um, unmute your microphone during the open forum in case you have a question or a comment. So uh, how to ask question during the open forum? So just use the chat box, which is uh, located at the lower part of, this, of the screen. So just click the chat icon, then type your name and uh, affiliation, and also your question and comment, and send to all uh, participants. No, I repeat, all to all participants and not to a specific person. And you may do this while the presentation is in progress. And the moderator will will call each participant who has a question or a comment during the open forum. And um, for all our Facebook viewers, you are also uh, highly encouraged to, to join the open forum. So you may send your question or comment using the comment uh, section in Facebook. So we will start in uh, one minute. So uh, we settle down and uh, I'll see you very soon. Thank you. Okay, naman. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. It's Thursday, June 11, and welcome to another edition of the PIDS webinar series where we tackle development issues based on data and evidence. I'm Sheila Siar, and I will be moderating this event. In, a, in an era marked by fast-paced technological advancements and more complex issues such as the current pandemic, which requires a more rapid response, timely and quality Official statistics is essential in making informed decisions. It is also important that information is well communicated and disseminated, and it is available to all who need it. Given this as uh, the topic of our webinar for this week, we post the question, how can the Philippine statistical system keep up with the fourth industrial revolution and other challenges? And so to formally open our event and share her insights about the topic, here is the president of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Dr. Celia Reyes. Mamsel? Thank you, Sheila. Good afternoon to our guests, colleagues from the government, academe, civil society, media, a private sector, as well as to all our Facebook viewers. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the participation of Assistant Secretary Dominic Rubia Tutay of the Department of Labor and Employment, and Assistant National Statistician Will Magillan of the Philippine Statistics Authority, OIC Director Mateo Lee Jr. of the National Council on Disability Affairs, Director General Romulo Miral of the House of Representatives, CPDRD, and Executive Director Merwin Salazar of the Senate Economic Planning Office as well as our friends from the private sector, Dr. Mahar Mangahas, who's the president of Social Weather Stations, and Dr. Ronald Holmes, president of Pulse Asia Research. We welcome you all to this afternoon's uh, webinar. We're happy to inform everyone that today we start using our new platform, the Cisco WebEx events, because we want to give you not only the best presentations, but also an online platform that would offer user-friendly and reliable security features, as well as high quality audio and video outputs. With WebEx, we hope to have more attendees to improve the quality of our forthcoming webinars. This afternoon, our speaker, the IDS's Senior Research Fellow, Dr. Jose Ramon Albert, will focus his discussion on the Philippine statistical system. Specifically, the study looked on how the system and its instrumentalities are performing in terms of the collection, production, and dissemination of data in the light of the digital revolution or the fourth industrial revolution, or FIRE as we call it at PIDS. 
Indeed, the information age has brought significant changes in the way we access, collect, and share data or information. In fact, many refer to data as the new oil of the modern era, just as oil is considered as an essential commodity that runs the industrial economy, so is data in the digital economy. We see the importance of data or statistics, especially in development planning. Research institutions like PIDS and the Philippine Statistics Authority aim to provide policymakers with accurate and timely data to help them come up with informed decisions and well thought out policies and programs and policies and um, to promote economic growth, alleviate poverty, improve education, housing, agricultural labor and employment, environment, and address issues on health like the COVID-19 pandemic. With the current pandemic, data is foremost in the minds of many. Data has been so critical in assessing the impacts and dealing with the current COVID-19 pandemic. Everyone is closely monitoring the data from the Department of Health on the number of COVID cases, deaths, and recoveries. In fact, as of June 10, there were 23,732 cases, 4,895 recoveries, and 1,027 deaths. The latest data from the Philippine Statistics Authority are now revealing the devastating impacts of the pandemic. The GDP for the, fourth, for the first quarter of 2020 contracted by 0.2%, the first contraction since the fourth quarter of 1998. Furthermore, the unemployment rate rose to a record high of 17.7%, and this translates to 7.3 million unemployed Filipinos in April. Governments, both national and local, businesses and households, are making decisions based on the data that are, that are available to them. Do we open up businesses? If yes, which sectors? Do we now allow public transport? Should people move around? How do we provide assistance to the affected households? The importance of more granular data has never been more emphasized than during this time. In response to the loss of earnings during the lockdown, the government has released 200 billion pesos for the social amelioration program to be given to 18 million households. The main challenge was to identify and find these households. For targeted programs, household level data are necessary. Yet sample surveys, which are the staple of national statistical offices, are not designed to provide this. This is just one of the challenges that the Philippine statistical system has to deal with. Currently, the Department of Education is thinking of using a combination of face-to-face -face classes and online courses. But do we know how many and which households have access to television, computers, and internet? Yes, we do at the provincial and regional levels, but at the municipal, city, and barangay levels, we don't have that kind of information. So the question in terms of in which barangays can we effectively implement online courses, we don't have that particular answer. So CBMS, which can provide such data, still needs to be implemented nationwide to provide data for all barangays. This is the direction that we're heading, putting together data coming from traditional sources as well as non-traditional sources. While we strive to provide data to policymakers, data collection remains a major challenge in the Philippines. According to the study, while there have been significant improvements over time, there are issues on the current legislative framework, resources, outputs, and services of the Philippine statistical system. We will also hear the policy recommendations of the study in order to address gaps such as the lack of manpower, data privacy and security, accuracy, timeliness, relevance, and availability of data. This will be discussed by Dr. Albert later in his presentation. With this, I give back the floor to the moderator. I hope you stay until the end of the webinar and we look forward to your active participation during the open forum. Once again, let me thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mamsel. Well, before we proceed uh, with the presentation of our speaker, allow me to repeat our um, guidelines for the open forum, which will immediately follow after the presentation. So while the presentation is is um, going on or uh, while the open forum is in progress. If you have any question or comment, just use the chat box, which is located at the lower part of the screen. As I don't know all of you, please type your name and affi affiliation and your question if you can, and I will call you during the open forum. And make sure that you are sending 
your message to all participants. I repeat, all participants, do not send it to the presenter or panelists or to a specific person. And uh, for all attendees, uh, you may have noticed that your microphone is muted. Don't worry because we will unmute your mic in the open forum in case you have a question or a comment. And for our viewers on Facebook, you are also very much welcome to participate. Just type your question or comment in the um, comment um, section of, uh, of uh, Facebook. Okay, so I think we are now ready to uh, listen to the presentation. So allow me to introduce the authors of the study. Uh, the main author is Dr. Jose Ramon Albert. He's a senior uh, research fellow at the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. He was um, a, the uh, former secretary general of the defunct National Statistical Coordination Board, which was consolidated with other statistics offices into the Philippine Statistics Authority. Dr. Albert is also a member of various uh, bodies and expert groups on statistics and related matters, including the United Nations Global Pulse Data Privacy Advisory Group and the Philippine Commission on Higher Education's Technical Committee on Statistics. Dr. Albert, together with our president, Dr. Reyes, uh, was part of the secretariat of an expert committee that evaluated the Philippine statistical system in 2007. He finished um, a BS in applied math, uh, uh, summa cum laude, uh, from the De La Salle University, as well as an MS in statistics and a PhD in statistics from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. His main research interests are on education, social protection, poverty, big data, data mining, and ICT. His co-author, Ms. Jana Flor Vesmanos is a research specialist at TIDS. Her policy research experience has been mainly focused on poverty, education, gender, and innovation. She earned her degree in uh, this economics at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, in 2014, where she graduated cum laude. The, pres the presentation will be done by Dr. Albert. So over to you now, Toots. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Sheila. I hope everyone can hear me. At the onset of this presentation, let me point out that uh, in 2007, already mentioned by Sheila, CIDS housed the Secretariat of an Expert Committee led by former uh, NEDA Secretary and then uh, Monetary Board Member Vin Valde Peñas that was tasked to review the then statistical system. I, I, together with uh, Dr. Reyes, were part of the Expert Committee Secretariat. And six years later, in 2013, a law was passed that considered several recommendations of the Expert Committee, though in a different form. And since it's been 13 years since the Valde Peñas Committee gave its report, and seven years after the enactment of the Philippine Statistics Act, Statistical Act, so, and with given, given the emerging dig digitalization and data revolution, arising from the use of frontier technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, we thought it important to look at how the Philippine statistical system fares in the production and communication of statistics required for national development planning. We structured the talk uh, after a brief introduction uh, about the context of the study and the study objectives and policy questions. We provide highlights on findings regarding governance issues including the current legislative framework, resources, as well as products and services of the statistical system. Finally, we give a summary and discuss ways forward. Across the world, governments typically have a national statistical system, a set of data producers in government that either conducts primary data collection or compiles data uh, to produce uh, a set of uh, socioeconomic statistics, including GDP, income poverty statistics, agricultural statistics, uh, statistics on crime, environment, education, and health. And these are meant for regular data needs of government for monitoring various sectors or for special ad hoc needs. For instance, now that we are fighting the novel coronavirus global pandemic. The Philippine statistical system, the country's government system of providing statistical information and services consists not only of data producers in government such as the Philippine Statistics Authority, Banco Central and Pilipinas, Department of Health, DepEd, 
Dole, but also a research and training body called the Philippine Statistical Research and Training Institute, as well as a statistical policy-making body, the PSA Board. The PSS, like other statistical systems, aims to have official statistics that are, uh, sorry, uh, that are supposed to be of quality. One moment, sorry, I seem to have gotten lost with my slides. Uh, okay, sorry. And uh, the Philippine statistical system what is in, just like any statistical system, wants to have statistics that are fit for use, that follow international standards and good practices, as well as well disseminated. As, early, as was earlier pointed out in the wake of the many disruptions of the fourth industrial revolution and the concomitant digitalization and data revolution, the study looks into how the statistical system has been faring in, in produ producing and communicating statistics required for development planning. The study also examines governance and other issues such as open data and confidentiality uh, and that influence various dimensions of data quality from relevance, accuracy, timeliness, accessibility, interpretability, and coherence, as well as trust in data, the data ecosystem, and the enabling environment. Uh, toward meeting the study objectives, we examined the current statistical Seem to be always getting lost. I have to think about. Sorry. Okay. So we we actually conducted a, a desk review of a number of uh, of uh, matters, including the the current law the Im implementation, uh, the IRRs of the law, as well as the several uh, things from the PSA reports as well as uh, uh, Paris 21 documentations, discussion papers, and other literature. We also look into um, uh, the information from the World Bank Statistical Capacity Index. Sorry, I seem to be really getting out. Uh, that way, and also we also complemented this with uh, some kind of uh, uh, the uh, collection and analysis of primary data from key informant interviews of experts. That way we would be able to get feedback on the uh, facts uh, regarding the statistical system. To start with, let me point out that uh, the mandate of the national statistical system, such as the, the Philippine statistical system, is anchored on a legal framework. And this allows certain government agencies to collect, to conduct statistical activities and collect data for purposes of uh, obtaining, of generating statistics. And, in, and, and it would be important for the law to define the main actors in the statistical system, the responsibilities, rights, accountabilities, and the relationships with each other. The Republic Act 10625 or the Philippine Statistical Act of uh, 2013, it's such a set general law that this defines government's uh, main authority in statistics, uh, mainly the, the PSA, uh, to collect data through cooperation from respondents and uh, by way of data sharing with, within government uh, for purposes of related, uh, of, uh, of coming up with statistics related to national development planning, but with due safeguards for confidentiality of indiv individual information. The law also established the, the PSA from the uh, uh, then major statistical agencies, as well as the PSRTI uh, from what was then the SRTC. But the law, however, has also fallen short of supplying a legal mandate on, all, on data sharing needed by the PSA to examine data across government agencies that would be important, for instance, those from BIR and SEC and even BSP, particularly for strengthening the national accounts compilation. The law mandates PSA to lead the uh, statistical coordination activities to enable effective effectiveness and efficiency in the production of official statistics in the country. And the PSA board to actually be giving uh, policy directions to the PSA 
and to all data producers in the entire statistical system as well as the PSRTI. Thus, for statistical coordination purposes, the PSA develops and standardizes socioeconomic classifications, concepts, and definitions, and comes up with measurements used by the entire statistical system. The PSA board has been creating or ab abolishing interagency committees as appropriate. While the statistics law covered many matters on statistical coordination and policy, but it also did not discuss um, a number of pertinent matters such as equal access to data, though this was partially covered by EO2 of uh, 2016, periodicity of sample surveys and, and releases, except for the conduct of the CPH, which is covered actually by uh, Batas Pambansa from long ago. Um, further, as regards the organization of the PSA, the statistics law provides three offices uh, to the PSA on uh, sectoral statistics, on civil censuses and technical coordination, and on civil registration and central support. The 2018 law on the national ID, R8, 11025 adds a fourth office on the national ID. And the statistics law attaches BSA to NEDA, but it is given technical independence to conduct its statistical activities, including planning and operations, but guided by the PSA board. We should, however, note that the statistics law focuses too much on the PSA and the PSRTI, but it does not discuss statistical operations of data producers other than the PSA. Further, it should be no noted that the Philippines uh, uh, provides its statistical authority special functions, namely civil registration and also now the national ID that are not part of statistics per se. This is of course not unique to the Philippines because France, for instance, uh, manages to, to ask uh, its statistics authority to have economic forecasting and, and uh, economic analysis. Uh, Mexico's INEHI actually does national mapping and also uh, the Federal Statistics Office has a support function in the elections. However, while uh, certainly the, the functions uh, can potentially provide a statistics authority more clout in society as a relevant institution in public administration, but having matters that are not relate, statistics related can distract attention from the function of a statistics authority on statistics production, as well as expanding statistics development. This has been the concern of many experts that PSA may be losing focus on its mandate on statistics. There is even now a new law that um, mandates PSA to handle the community-based monitoring system. Experts suggest studying whether or not PhilSys and even the civil registration system should continue staying in the PSA given the risks that the, the Phil, PhilSys especially would be hacked. If and when this happens, public trust in the PSA and in statistics can easily erode. Trust is a core function of statistics. While the statistics law recognizes the importance of maintaining integrity for the statistical system, and the PSS has had a tradition, long-standing tradition and reputation of professionalism, there are some concerns from experts that statistics may be, may be losing credibility, not just because of the data issues at DOH for the COVID-19 infections, but also because currently even the dissemination of PSA-produced statistics, such as GDP, poverty, unemployment, is perceived by media and the, P and the public as actually coming from NEDA rather than the PSA itself. The suggestion by experts is to look at experience of other countries. For instance, Thailand's NSO is attached to the Ministry of ICT. Canada is not attached to any specific ministry and the ministry is act the, the Canadian Statistics Office is actually rotated regularly for budget purposes. The office, as far as the Office of Nas the National Statistician is concerned, which is uh, considered, uh, who is, which is considered the COO of the PSA and the Philippine representative in international statistical bodies, the law explicitly defines qualifications of a national statistician 
but it is silent on when the, the national statistician can be removed from office. There is also a rigorous screening process, which is good as it, it has a committee from various government agencies and academic institutions uh, that screen likely candidates for the national statistical national statistician post. The statistics law uh, gives a, a rank of undersecretary to, to the national statistician who is, who is assisted by three deputies for each of the offices and now a fourth one uh, for the national ID. There is also, there is concern that given the scope of work at PSA, uh, perhaps it might be important to limit the responsibilities of the PSA or alternatively give the national statistician more prominence uh, by having him, him or her uh, get a cabinet rank. Research and training is central to statistics development. The statistics law transformed the SRTC into PSRTI uh, uh, to take charge of research programs uh, in the entire statistical system and to collaborate with academia in the conduct of training for the entire statistical system. PSRTI is headed by an executive director and given policy directions by a governing board chaired by the PSA board chairperson who is the secretary for socioeconomic planning. The members of this board include the Dean of the UP School of Statistics, the director of the uh, executive director of the Philippine Social Science Council, a NEDA representative, and the executive director of the PSRTI, and possibly two appointed members from the um, private sector. The idea to re-engineer the former SRTC into PSRTI was to make a, it much stronger and provide it fellows similar to PIDS and also the UNCA. PBM should recognize the importance of strengthening PSRTI as a means of developing the entire statistical system. But up to now, items on fellows have not been given to the PSRTI as was mentioned in the law. The draft law prepared by the Valle Peñas Committee in 2007 suggested cross-posting statistics personnel across various non -go uh, national government agencies and LGUs by also assuring basic statistical competence through certification from the PSRTI. But unfortunately, this was not discussed in the law, in the statistics law, nor in the IRRs. There is also recognition that the PSS can invest in making more use of admin-based data and also promoting data quality assessment frameworks. Further, it could use other new uh, data sources such as big data for addressing some data gaps in official statistics, uh, especially as we try to reduce the cost of data collection and the response burden. Official statistics are dependent on the resources made available to in their production. Official statistics are public goods, freely accessible to all parties, uh, but public goods are subject to um, market failure and free riders. Thus, statistical systems should be largely financed by national governments with the development community providing occasional support. In the Philippines, financing of statistical activities in the PSS is primarily sourced from the GAA. The Public Act 1065, however, does not give specific mentioning of balancing cost and usefulness of statistics. Implicit assumptions are that the PSA and all data producers are getting the required budgetary resources in statistical um, uh, production and in assuring data quality. But budgets, at least for the production of uh, priority statistics, are currently not guaranteed. While the PSA has so far managed to conduct many of its major statistical activities, uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned, the law does not guarantee statistics budgets. A report of for if the former national statistician suggested the 2020 PSA budget has nominally increased by 343% from the consolidated budget of the uh, uh, of about 1.65 billion uh, in 2014 of all the major statistical agencies then. But such an analysis is put into question uh, in a medium-term expenditure framework study that was conducted for the PSA, where it was suggested that total budget 
has actually been stagnant at 0.014% of GDP in the period from 20, 2008 to 2017. The nominal increase reported by uh, the former national statistician is actually on account of work on the national ID, which is still on the pilot stage two years after the law was enacted. Further, after uh, adjusting for variation in the conduct of periodic censuses and surveys over the years, total budget uh, for 2015 to 2017, net of allocation for special service and activities is even actually much lower than in previous years when expressed as a percentage of GDP. The MTEF study also suggests that budgets of some surveys, for instance, the 80s, exceeds requirements, but for other surveys, there are actually uh, problems in budgets. And so the difference in, in, in the, is actually used by the PSA uh, to, uh, to help the underfunded activities. However, um, while the PSA's total budget allocation is not necessarily in excess of what they need, however, uh, there is a resulting lack of transparency and account and inefficiency. The, M the MTEF study should help PSA develop a strategy for actually obtaining the right resources uh, with budget ma managers. Even for PSRTI, regular budgets have remained meager at not over 40 million pesos in recent years. But this has all, in nominal terms, this has been more than double uh, what they were getting a decade ago of about 13 to 16 million. Now, some facts about uh, the human resources in the statistical system suggest that there are very limited number of statisticians available in the country. During the period 2012 to 2014, when the PSS uh, was in transition because of the implementation of the uh, Statistics Act, the Philippine government had a decline in the number of statisticians because many of them chose to retire. And uh, in the country re report for, uh, for uh, support to statistics, 2016, uh, responding government agencies reported that only 12% of the total uh, number of government human resources in agencies that are actually producing statistics are actually doing statistics work. As of 2018, PSA has filled, filled up only 85% of its 2,799 plantilla positions. Uh, three years prior, it only filled out about 70%. PSA will need to have another 1,000 more items soon for the national ID, but the pace at which items are being filled up suggests a supply-side issue. Even the supply of PhDs in the PSA is very low especially when we compare them with neighboring countries, especially Vietnam. And this is why, it, as will be shown later, we would find it un uh, understandable why the country has not improved its rankings in statistics development. The PSDP, the Philippine Statistical Development Program, suggests that greater statistical capacity development needs technical, professional, and career development. And consequently, there are goals set on increasing the number of staff with graduate degrees. Currently, technical capacity is trying to be strengthened with training, but to what extent these training activities are actually uh, coming up with results is another matter, especially when we start thinking of uh, uh, people actually working in silos, and it's unclear whether the capacity development activities are contributing to the overall improvement of statistical production processes and the statistics value chain. The PSRTI aims to work on improving the statistical capacity across the entire statistical system, but it is unclear to what extent it is currently working on to improve capacities, particularly among LGUs, especially given the new CBMS law. The PSS, uh, particularly the PSA, will need to be strategic in developing lifelong learning systems for all its staff, uh, including using massive open online courses, preferably developed by the PSRTI. A provision in the statistics law, as already mentioned earlier, was to cross post to uh, other agencies and LGUs, but this up to now has been implemented. 
culture and work environment in the PSA and in the entire NPS RTI, we also need to change in such a manner that newly acquired skills should be welcome and put to use. Currently, the PSA and PSRTI are engaged in doing some work on big data analytics. But this would actually need very good ICT infrastructure and ample com committed bandwidth, download data sources, big data sources, and to catalog, organize, and process data in a timely manner, possibly even make use of cloud technology. A serious problem faced by the PSS is the extremely, extremely limited budget it has been working with um, for maintenance of statistical infrastructure and modernization of ICT systems used in statistical production process. Although the PSA it has its ISSP offering a very comprehensive view of their ICT, but the ICT and DBM expect all public organizations to prioritize their internal and cross-agency ICT projects, as well as IT investments, ICT investments, because of resource constraints. The ICP suggests that ISSBs account for a three-year aging of ICT equipment, but the PSA inventory of ICT equipment in their ISSP suggests that PSA capital outlay expenditures have actually not kept up with this the ICT suggestion. Most international experts uh, would think that the PS, the Philippines is at a similar stage of development as Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. And if you look at the performance of the PSS, you may want to look at international assessment tools such as the World Bank's uh, Statistical Capacity Index. But it is also important to examine uh, information from local experts, especially as these international assessments have their limitations. As regards the Philippine performance in the World Bank Statistical Capacity Index, um, from being top among ASEAN member states in 2008 to 2012, the Philippines slumped in 2014, bested by Indonesia and, and Thailand to third place. And the Philippines improved, while the Philippines improved its score in the index a year later, but the ranking was still actually even outperformed barely go by Vietnam uh, and we fell to fourth place. And so up to now, continuing to be at fourth place. If we examine the statistical capacity index in detail, this suggests that the, some reason why we have not improved involves one, base year, the base year of the national accounts as well as the base year for CPI have been using not very recent years. Further, we do not have import and export price indices since 2010. Also, the Philippines has not maximized its score on primary completion and on gender equality on education on account of DepEd actually not reporting uh, this, uh, actually reporting only once out of the latest five years. Uh, in tw between 2012 and 2013, DepEd had uh, not reported these education indicators to the global statistics compilers, namely UNESCO, Institute of Statistics, uh, in part because DepEd did not know how to project, uh, um, uh, generate indicators uh, such as the net enrollment ratio, gi given that the PSA only projects population by specific age groups, zero to four, five to nine, and so forth, which do not actually, uh, um, are, are not equivalent to the, uh, the, the school age uh, groups. Chuck Manasan uh, in the, uh, has had suggested uh, in the MTEF study that perhaps uh, she attributes the weakening of the performance of the of the Philippines compared to other uh, member states in ASEAN in the Statistical Capacity Index to be suggestive of persistent data quality issues, as well as data gaps in all the new concerns alike that are largely a result of the lack of sufficient monetary and human resources given to the statistical system. Now, if we look at the, the open data inventory of Open Data Watch, you're doing a lot better. Here we have uh, scored second uh, to Singapore in the Odin scores, even as early as 2015 and 2016. We got outpaced a little bit by Indonesia, 
but we regained our second spot in a, a year later. The Odin scores uh, suggest that we have a very good uh, uh, high levels uh, of coverage and openness for Philippine economic statistics, but we don't, we don't have the very good scores for social statistics. Uh, further improvements in the Odin score can actually be readily made by collecting and publishing more recent data and reporting more historical data, not only in social statistics, but also in environmental statistics. It should be important to have a clear and open terms of use policy and to release much more metadata to accompany data so that we could increase the usefulness uh, and use of data. The one issue about statistical assessments, as already mentioned by international organizations, is that they have a narrow way of, of, of viewing statistical systems purely on the, on the basis of uh, uh, statistical production. Uh, whereas we need to examine uh, local experts, and, the, and I show on the slide now, uh, what the experts have been saying about uh, the various statistics produced by the statistical system. Uh, results suggest here that there is very high uh, regard for banking and finance statistics, as well as statistics on income poverty, income consumption and poverty, uh, and statistics on the fiscal sector, and also the national income accounts. But there is very not, not very good view of uh, the statistics on justice and security, uh, human settlements and housing, transportation, uh, fishery statistics, science, ICT, and innovation, as well as agricultural statistics. While quality is not easily defined, uh, following Braxton, the dimensions of, of quality could be discussed, uh, which we did here in the study pertaining to relevance, accuracy, timeliness, accessibility, in interpretation, uh, interpretability, and coherence. As regards relevance, experts point out that the SDGs put forward the, a very amb ambitious uh, agenda to leave no one behind. But we need a lot of granular data to describe the SDGs or even the PDP uh, so that we can have proper policy action. Official statistics often hide living conditions of special segments of society who are actually much more vulnerable. And this is, um, this is largely uh, because we, there, the, the surveys only give big pictures, uh, whereas we will need much more small area statistics. Uh, further, one statistics expert interviewed pointed to emerging trends on vital statistics, particularly that half, over half, 53% of births in the Philippines uh, are already outside of wedlock. However, there are currently no behavioral insights on why this is happening and what should be done. Several FGB participants lament that the, uh, the accuracy of data uh, from establishment surveys and even agricultural surveys, as there's these survey designs uh, have not improved and even occasionally uh, deteriorated. Considering that most of the poor depend on agriculture and that policymakers make critical policy decisions such as the importation of rice, and now even I heard the uh, chicken, uh, mainly, uh, so, so we, it would be important to improve the quality of agricultural statistics. The PSA is reportedly, however, in fairness, planning to, to redesign many of its surveys, agricultural surveys, in the years to come, uh, based on an updated sampling frame from the 2012 uh, CAF. But there are no conversations currently being made uh, with experts outside of the PSA. Although the statistics law mentions timeliness as an important priority in the PSS, but experts wonder why in a digital age, timeliness has not kept up. Time lags of some PSA surveys, such as the annual survey on Philippine business and industry and the census of Philippine business and industry uh, are, uh, are serious. Uh, um, according to the World Bank Statistical Capacity Index, the periodicity of statistics has even declined since 2011. The statistics law mentions nothing about periodicity of censuses, surveys, and releases, nor are they their specific uh, policies about 
uh, the periodicity other than the, the ones for designated statistics. Currently, there are no accountabilities regarding uh, good and not so good practices on timeliness. Um, many experts suggest that the earlier releases of national accounts, agricultural production and farm gate prices might not even really necessarily make policymakers respond faster with timely interventions. Experts wonder whether the early releases are actually uh, sacrificing data quality given that response rates from establishments and agricultural surveys are tend to be much lower uh, compared to previous releases. The open data inventory performance uh, has been validated by local experts feedback, which, uh, and they have a very generally positive view about the shift of the PSA to make micro data from uh, surveys, especially household surveys, freely accessible by the public. Um, the, many of our official statistics and micro data of these household surveys are, are free of charge, at least now, uh, but access can be cumbersome, according to the experts. Um, depende daw kung kailan mag-access ng, ng, ng website. Uh, further, PSA, uh, the, the micro data made available in the PISADA, the PSA data archive, uh, do not necessarily uh, contain the survey design variables that are important for the estimation of standard errors to uh, be able to assess the parameter estimates uh, from survey data. It has been noted that the PSA has data dissemination platforms for the Philippine Development Plan, namely StatDev and the SDGs, namely Stat SDG Watch, but there are none about the ASEAN community blueprints. Several experts also expressed concern that the PSA data platforms are very difficult to access uh, outside of regular office hours. I already mentioned this earlier. Uh, experts express strong concerns the, about the PSA decision to change some interagency committees, such as the TC on poverty, to an interagency committee. Uh, and even now, there is no technical committee on survey design. Now, as far as the TC on, on uh, as far as poverty is concerned, there are a lot of technical issues, uh, given especially that the the survey, uh, sorry, the the poverty lines uh, methodology was adopted uh, more than ten years ago, and it's about time to incorporate some changes in the uh, the actual calculation of the poverty lines. Um, while the the development of a multidimensional uh, measure on poverty is welcome. Uh, and several exercises were generated uh, and presented to the Interagency Committee on Poverty Statistics, but the MPI release of PSA lacked consultation with the public, and there is concern that MPI can be easily misinterpreted, given a lot of technical issues hounding the MPI from the choice of indicators to the choice of weights. Stakeholders view many top of mind uh, statistics as being coherent. And they say that the use of uh, press releases to correct and revise statistics is a good practice, but it has been observed that there is no, there are no existing guidelines and statistical policies for their timing. Because of adherence of statistics, statistical standards, the official statistics are generally uh, considered to be quite comparable over time but there are still some weaknesses that continue to prevail. Given the demands for uh, national development planning and issues of trust in data, uh, the, um, uh, that all national statistical systems, not just the PSS, is confronting in the modern age, the PSA needs to be the very strategic in governance of the PSS. Uh, ironically, the public branding on the PSA continues to be about civil registration and soon the national ID and not about statistics per se. These are, there are very big risks, as I mentioned earlier, about whether these data holdings on these systems could be hacked. And when, and, and when that happens, uh, there will be dire consequences to the, pub, the, the trust that the public has had in the PSA as an institution. Experts point out the PSA competence in statistics has weakened as evidence from international statistical assessments, for instance, the SCI, as well as the failure to release the results of the recent CAF. 
The conversion of PCs into interagency committees has also weakened outside experts' uh, inputs, and the PSA should actually do some remedial actions um, to correct these matters. Current budgets uh, of the PSA have been fully utilized. Staff positions have not been filled. Uh, experts suggest that the PSA, with support from the PSRTI, work on improving uh, survey designs, especially of establishment and agricultural statistics, um, uh, agricultural, agricultural surveys, um, and of also integrating traditional data sources with non-traditional sources such as LGU data, big data, and remote sensing. There are many suggestions on improving uh, the quality of official statistics, including mainstreaming data quality assessment frameworks and on capacity building, uh, particularly also ensuring that there are uh, uh, development of technical skills and also self skills among statistical human resources. Further, DBM should be providing items to PSRTI uh, on fellows as provided in the statistics law. And the, the PSA should commence cross-posting to other agencies and to LGUs and maybe even to DOH. Further, the PSS needs uh, better data, uh, better data dissemination and communication strategies, aside from better budgetary support and improve statistical infrastructure, including systems who are for cybersecurity and knowledgeable staff on ICT. There are also a number of recommendations to amend the statistics law so that it describes processes on products and services across all data producers, not just PSA, and also requiring government to assure statistics budgets for at least the, the so-called designated or priority statistics. Uh, mentioning equal access to data and independence of statistics, revising the composition of the PSA board and certain responsibilities that actually uh, put into question uh, trust and independence in the PSA. And finally, requiring also uh, the, the producers to publish and adhere to advanced release calendars uh, that can uh, uh, protect the integrity and independence of statistics, and may I add also the composition also of the PSRTI board as well. Given the emerging data landscape in the wake of uh, the data revolution and uh, emerging digitalization, the statistical system needs to work on building trust. The past few months, uh, uh, of course, this is no longer part of the report, but we have seen issues on data quality uh, particularly for DOH data on infections that can put into question any sets of statistics produced by government agencies. And for the past few days, I've been disturbed a little bit that the DOH secretary and the BSB governor have suggested that, uh, that there are issues about the unemployment figures released by the PSA, uh, that they're inaccurate, when in fact the LFS has been one of the most trusted data sources uh, and so the PSA should actually be correcting government officials uh, whenever they put doubt into official statistics. Finally, government uh, needs to be able to invest in statistics, statisticians, and statistical organizations to ensure that official statistics in the Philippines continue to be reviewed well, not only here, but also abroad, and also will fare much better in its current standing as we try to give a portrait uh, of what sh we should be doing uh, towards the future. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Toots, for your uh, very insightful and comprehensive presentation. So, friends, we now proceed to the open forum. And uh, we have uh, some questions from our um, face Facebook viewers. Um, and we start Let's start with the question of, of uh, Dr. Uh, Federico Macaranas of the Asian Institute of Management. Uh, Dr. Macaranas asks, what is uh, the Philippine Statistics Agency doing on stats on roster of high-level Filipino professionals overseas in major fields of, of the fourth industrial revolution, health, education, trade and investment, and others, um, and any grad 
granular or big data collection efforts for education planning, for example, for economic reopening, including schools. So uh, we have uh, uh, some participants from uh, the Philippine, uh, from the PSA, and they are very much welcome also to give their response. Okay, so it's yeah. Well, for of course, as I mentioned, that the PSA does have a little bit of work on big data, but I'm not too sure whether they're doing that work relative to uh, um, issues that would be mat that ma would matter for whether or not you know, for instance, uh, education. Should be opening uh, right now the only information in fact the only information that we have about internet access uh is is not even coming from the statistical system there is a however a, a survey that was initially done uh last year but the results were not are not yet fully available on ict use this was done by the ict and it is going to be but this is this is still a sample survey it's not like uh, granular data it could only produce at best information at the regional level. Uh, now, regarding information, for, uh, I think if I understood correct what Poch was saying, information from uh, all of our people overseas. Yes, our high level doing professionals, some work on, yes. On the fourth industrial revolution. I'm not, yes. I mean, I'm not, I mean, it would be nice if there would be some kind of inventory, but I'm maybe the, it's not PSA itself, maybe it's the uh, Department of Science and Technology that's maybe um, having some kind of networking uh, but I, I i i i mean i'm i know that you know right now of course that's the reason why the the, the icp uh, sorry the ost has been pushing for this balik scientist programs because mm -hmm. we're trying to make sure that we have a lot more people human resources that can help especially now that we are we're in deep trouble you know i mean uh, especially during this pandemic we need we need a lot more people uh, many of our our people who've gone overseas uh, maybe they should come back but for, for for that to happen, we also need to put the proper environment for, for mm -hmm. people to to be able to work better because you know there are a lot of barriers also for for all our scientists to work to come back and work. Okay, uh, we have uh, uh, some uh, follow up comments from uh, Dr. Macaranes and. Uh, you mentioned about um, um, constraints um, pertaining to you, to the human resource aspect, and he has actu he actually has some uh, um, recommendations. And he said, uh, tap uh, overseas talents and resources, uh, getting a champion in the legislative branch. And he added, uh, what is not measured well can't be managed wisely. Indeed, any. Um, any uh, uh, comment on this? Well, hard, it would be hard for me to 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 actually uh, go against a, a marketing guru like Poch. <laughs> uh, I mean, I fully agree. I mean, the Poch is, is 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 absolutely right that you know it's it's about time that we really need to make our our plans more cohesive because human resources particularly need to be developed. I mean, uh, I've I've been saying this all along that not just for the statistical system but in general for science. Uh, we need to to invest more in people, and the ones who are overseas, we need to to have some ways of tying them up. If they can't come back directly, there should be now that technology is available, there should be ways mm -hmm. for us to actually get them, you know, hire them to to improve our our human resources. But I'm not sure whether we have actual programs on that. I mean, we tend to be like having programs that are very they're still like uh, de cajon, you know. We don't think mm -hmm. out of the box, and it's it's way mm -hmm. high time for us to get out of the box. Okay. Uh, well, just want to uh, relate a summary points uh, given by Dr. Marcaranas. He said uh, increasing but the budget to hire more qualified statistics professionals. Well, you you mentioned that in your discussion, improving the competence in uh, survey design, creating new products, going for a uh, granular da data collection and, and use. Uh, and he, he mentioned that, uh, you know, he emphasized working with the private groups. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah let me just mention, you know, that indeed, you know, for, 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 for capacity building in particular, we haven't really been maximizing massive open online courses. I mean, that's my sense. Mm -hmm. that, you know, you right now, the fact of the matter that PSAs are having difficulty hiring people suggest there's a supply side issue. So even if 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 people have don't, don't have an actual statistics degree, economics or related, that shouldn't matter if they're trained, you know? If we are able to train them to actually think uh, statistical concepts, understand what's, what's 
what's the basic idea and you know uh in in other in other countries for instance india uh before you get into the statistical system they undergo six months training in the mm -hmm. statistical office i'm not it's high time that we start having those kinds of programs but for you to do that you need you need resources and right and i'm not too sure we're we're like we're, we're we seem to be we seem to be forgetting that human resources are are one of our most critical resources Mm -hmm. Thank you, Toots. Our oh, next question is uh, from Dr. Francis Kim of PIDS. Francis, please. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. In Albert. Uh, yes, uh, Francis, you may, you may uh, turn on your microphone so we can see you. No, not your microphone, but your video, I mean. Your microphone is... And make your voice on. louder. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, let me try. Let me try to look for my question first. I think I sent my question to to everyone. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, you yes. can read it um, because I didn't read it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Doctor Albert, how can how can the PSA provide information on the use of fire technologies of establishments, government agencies, and even households? Uh, would you suggest the conduct of uh, another survey that is um, uh, specifically tailored to answer these questions and also um, yes. in addition would you uh, suggest a uh, conduct of another survey that looks into income coming from e-commerce platforms thank you yeah yeah thanks francis the, the for the second one let me just point out that the the, the, the income and uh, has been actually tracked by the DICT household survey already, both income and expenditures of households on, uh, on e-commerce and other things. So there's very detailed set of questions. And uh, this DICT survey was conducted uh, together with uh, the PSRTI. Now, for the first question regarding being able to, to come up with, with information uh, that will be important uh, for these uh, new firms, particularly platform-based companies. Uh, in fact, we, this is one of the things that I, I am really strongly proposing because platforms, the, the, the reality is like uh, of the, 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 what is it, the top 10 world's uh, corporations in terms of market or assets, you know, uh, eight of them or seven or eight of them, I think, are platform enabled. So because they're platform enabled, it, it, it suggests that the platform economy is something we need to keep measuring. It's not just the digital economy. Uh, the PSA is currently trying to work out, uh, in fact, if I recall right, they already have had support from the World Bank to come up with some preliminary estimates of uh, the digital economy. Uh, and, and likely, I mean, I'm even not, I'm just going to guess that it's somewhere around 10% or less because that's, uh, but even if it's 10% or less, I think it's probably growing, but that's the entire digital sector. And I'm pretty sure the digital sector of that digital sector, a big chunk of that now will be where there will be much more growth will be platforms. Right now, we're making use of platforms, not just this kind of platform for, for learning, but we're using it for, 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 for paying, for, for, for uh, you know, for retail. So there's a lot of work now and, uh, and we need to be able to give that kind of information. But unfortunately for you to get, um, to, to have this new survey, a PSA also needs to understand what's going on, so they they should be in conversations with their, with with these new with with companies about what what are they doing, and I think uh, this is one of the things that I hope uh, you know the, the 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 managers of this the PSA will will start doing more extensively. You can, you have to get out of your shell. You need to talk more with people in the business sector because the economy is changing dramatically, and if we're going to make sure that we are able to withstand not just COVID now, but future problems. Uh, we need to make sure that we rely much more on the digital economy. Thank you, Toots and uh, Francis. Now let us go to our next uh, next question, and it is from uh, Dr. Mahar Mangahas, the president of uh, Social Weather Stations. Dr. Mangahas? Okay, Nava. Yes, sir, go ahead. ahead. Yes, we can hear you, Mahar. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm wondering about the coping of the surveys of the government with the quarantine. Let's take the labor force survey in particular. That requires 
surveying workers. Were you able to go to these workers and ask them questions given that there's uh, no transportation available? Yeah, I, I, I can't speak for the, the PSA as far as it's the first quarter LFS, but as far as I could understand, uh, Mahar, from the, from the websites, uh, the PSA, the information suggested us what they did was a little bit more innovative. They did a little bit of face-to-face, -face, but they also did, uh, because before they could do the face-to-face the -face interviews, I, as far as I understand it, they usually also ask the barangay officials to give uh, for warning to the households that they would be visited. So, so for some of the households, they, they rather than actually interviewing them face-to-face, -face, they were uh, conducting uh, phone calls. They asked uh, the, the cell phone numbers of the people they were interviewing. Uh, and also the uh, email addresses. Uh, that way, it would be easier to, to conduct the survey. But I'm I'm not too sure. I mean, they uh, to to what extent? I I would certainly be interested in in getting a, a, a more uh, an, a, a sense of whether this is different depending on who they interviewed, what approach they used, yeah. you know, uh, that kind of information. But the aggregate information suggests that, as is expected, you know that uh, the you know we had the. Uh, three times uh, the unemployment from last, the first quarter of last year, you know, which is something that, that uh, all our government agencies should be m get, get more worried about, especially, uh, you know, uh, but in addition also there, there are issues about pe you know, people doing surveys, not just, not just for transportation, lack of transportation. I can't even understand why government is not allowing public transportation, you know, uh, but honestly it's their policy, but given that, uh, it's really difficult not just not just to do survey operations, but can you imagine the risks of, of all our field of field staff to actually go to the to put to, to, to people and then and, and do this all this kind of work. Uh, so we need to that's why I'm really pushing. I, I think it's a, it's more high it's very important that we uh, rely much more on, on technologies uh, whenever possible. Though of course there will be digital divides because some people also may not have access to cell phones or, or the internet. Yeah. I, I don't think you should allow barangay officials to choose your sample for you. I don't think they do that, Bar. They, they do have a, what's known as a master sample. So, but they, they, they already have a list of who are those people they, and, and households they should be going to. So they just tell the barangay official, Pakisabi ho na pupunta kami dyan, no? They have the addresses. I think they, they have a, they, they, it's a let elaborate process of how they do how they do the sampling yeah okay see. would you have a follow-up uh, question sir dr mangas okay there are other people who want to ask okay thank you very much sir Thanks, our, um, okay our next question is from uh, miss emmy gianan uh, of the polytechnic university of the philippines Ms. Guiana. Yes, um, good afternoon, Paul. Um, sir, uh, Dr. Albert. Sir, main takeaway lang po natin dito sa talk is that yung importance po ng statistics and yung paggamit ng big data for the benefit of the people. Um, my question is, we have a steady tide of anti-intellectualism and disinformation in the country. So, how would our actions and our innovations towards fire technologies and big data address or try to stave off these problems na makita natin ngayon uh, very rampant siya sa ating yeah. bansa and also with the rest of Southeast Asia. Yun po, sir. Yeah. That's a very good question. I mean, the, the environment has changed because there's anti-intellectualism. There are a lot of people who, don't, who distrust statistics. They think, oh, those numbers, are, especially if they're, the statistics do not match their, what, what their paradigms and their, how they view things. No? Uh, but then, the reality is, uh, you know, it's it's you know, it's just a pendulum. It switches from one side to another. So uh, we have to think long term. You know, for whatever it's worth, the environment has to change. And maybe part of it is the the reason why we also need to have some kind of capacity building, not just for the data producers, but also for the data users, potentially the stakeholders, the public. Because I always wonder. Uh, I mean, how much of uh, you know capacity building are we giving? To people who who may not be understanding, or even government officials who don't quite understand the numbers, you know. So I think these are things that, uh, and they may they may misinterpret, you know. So I think uh, the the PSA has its role to play there because nobody else will do it. 
uh, but it has to work in, in conjunction with PSRTI with many many in the data ecosystem you know even the private sector you have Marmara is there so you know you, you there are lots of uh, I heard Ronnie Holmes is also there part of the 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 you know there are so many so many parts in the data ecosystem we have to work together it's partnership uh, and we need to in a way battle the 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 the, the current environment where there may be anti-intellectualism, anti-science, and anti-data prevailing. Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Sheila, I can't hear you. I think you're off. Sorry about that. So yeah, our next um, question is from Mr. Sunny Afable. Uh, he's who's from the An National Anti-Poverty Commission. Sunny messages that his microphone is not working, so I'll just read it. Okay, he said, I find Dr. Albert's study very timely in light of recent developments with the PSA. Uh, how can the CBMS law address the country's existing data gaps and improve or complicate the operations of the PSS, especially with regard to the production of poverty statistics. And one of our Facebook viewers also mentioned, also commented uh, on the CBMS. And she said, um, and it's from Micah Trono. Micah said, I think the CBMS might address the issue with granular data. Yeah, I mean, of course, you have uh, Dr. Reyes, who's the, the, the head of the CBMS team in the Philippines, who can probably give her own views. But my, my take is on this is this. I'm, I'm getting a little bit worried. You now have the census, you'll have a CBMS, you'll have so many surveys, and then there are people also going around, you know, getting information for, for the social amelioration program. So everybody's collecting data, and to some extent, you know, there's a response burden. And I think we have to be a little bit careful. The, no matter how good the quality of a system is, uh, but if also uh, there might we need to 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 understand that this just has to be coordinated well, because you don't just keep having data collections to have small area statistics. You know, I mean, and for for another matter is that, I mean, I would think that there are, there 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 should be a, a, an actual work program not just for PSA with other data collection agencies but make sure that uh, you know that uh, in the first place you may keep collecting data but it's not being used you know that, that's the first thing you you need you collect data because it's need, it's important uh, second is sure you need you need to be able to also collect data that will be uh, that you can integrate uh, th this is called interoperability uh, many times when you have data systems mm -hmm. you you have all of this uh, that are not even communicating with each other and that's why mm -hmm. it's a mess you know I mean <laughs> So I think we need to, 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 to make sense of all the systems. So while it's true that we need data, we, some of us need information, like right now we, not, we need to find out persons with disability, what are, what are, the, what are the, the risks they face, ma, are, they, are they more at risk, and etc. You know, poor, mahirap na nga sila, PWD pa, etc., uh, etc., et nasa remote area. So we have no information about them. It's hidden, you know. So the only way to get the information is to get actual data. But then you can't keep getting more and more data every time, every every month. Kinpunpunpuntahan mi sila para lang interviewin mo sila. You also need to make sure that you know you don't you don't overwhelm people. So it's, you mentioned in your presentation that the current setup in the P, in the PSS uh, promotes working in silos. Rather than uh, uh, promoting a coordination and collaboration, sure. could you yeah, expect really on this? Yeah, it's not really promoting, but you know, I mean, I remember when, in we were, silos. when we were when we were in the expert committee. Uh, I mean, we were the secretariat of the expert committee. The experts uh, then, uh, you know, Dr. Valde Peñas, uh, Dr. Shell Habito, Dr. C. David, uh, Dr. Lisa Bersales, who became the first national statistician, as well as uh, Dr. Mercedes Consumption, They were concerned that. You know, you have NSO, NSCB, BAS, BLESS. They were already working in silos. So, in fact, that the reason was, sige, pagsamahin mo sila, isa na lang boss nila, that way it will be easier for them. Pero we're not sure whether that has even worked. You know, right now, I mean, to what extent are all the different groups within the PSA even talking with each other? Uh, kasi, I mean, I'm the Nico. Sometimes uh, 
uh, you know, magkakaroon ng something like this, a, a forum where the, magkakaroon ng PSA uh, stakeholders involved in a forum. And then the PSA staff are also like arguing with each other. <laughs> you know, I said, sandali, di ba dapat bago kayo pumunta sa amin? Nag-usap muna kayo. So that shows there are these silos that, that persist. And we have to remove those kinds of silos. We have to make sure that we're, there's a whole of government approach. Okay. Thank you, Toots. Our next question is from uh, Dr. Arlene Innocentia of the uh, De La Salle University. Dr. Innocentia? Dr. Innocentia, go ahead with your question. Your microphone is on. Yeah, you can okay. Talk. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, you can. We can hear you. Okay. <laughs> uh, probably, um, I think part of the question, I, one of the questions were, was already answered, no? Pero I'm really just wondering, um, uh, first, good afternoon pala. Toots, thanks to everybody. everybody. Uh, kasi we had, that, we did this national scoping study, which was commissioned by NEDA, Central Office, on the potential of, um, uh, establishing or estimating provincial product accounts. So with all with all these many things, with, with everything that PSA is doing, clearly, you know, parang, obviously, hindi siya priority. Um, but don't you think this is, you know, something which is also important if the LGUs are to plan well, if you don't have these key statistics to help you and, um, you know, uh, we, GRDP is to is to um, aggregated, no, to plan at the PLGU or LGU level. So uh, that's one. I mean, what should you know? Um, what should be done? I mean, do you will you need a champion to push this forward so that maybe someone will pick up and really push for production or uh, estimation of this, deba? Right? And then uh, second. Uh, well, we noted when we went around, um, most of the uh, uh, POWs, MAUs that we have interviewed, uh, yung PIVET, uh, you know, um, those involved in um, agriculture, agriculture statistics, uh, we, uh, they, they have um, uh, observed uh, discrepancies, no? In some cases, it would be 20,000 off in terms of, say, livestock, livestock um, uh, unit, uh, inventory, or uh, or it can be, you know, uh, 5,000 or 10,000 higher. So um, there had been talks supposedly to harmonize or to reconcile, but you get the feeling that at the LGU level, you know, they are not really um, heard <laughs> or uh, or probably PSA is really just too busy with many other things, no? To even bother with talking and really, um, you know, um, validating their their agriculture statistics. Yeah. Uh, well, two things are early. First, the, regarding this uh, having provincial accounts. I mean, many. I, I remember when I was still head of the NSCB, uh, then uh, Senator Recto was asking whether they we could get a. Provincial accounts for for uh, Governor V, you know, <laughs> uh, who was then governor yes. of Batangas. So of course, I, I said we would be welcome. Uh, the NSCB then there only had, we only had twenty people at that time. Believe it or not, twenty people to do the the, the national accounts. Uh, you know, we, we there is always a way to do it, but the only thing is one is human resources people there. Second is whether the the the, the the province itself has enough data to be able to come up with some information because I mean it's easier if it's like you know an island uh, so you can you you don't have all of these uh, other things that that can complicate the 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 accounts but it, it can be a little bit more problematic if it's if it's not in a way called isolated no? Kung, I, because there have been attempts to do ki some kind of uh, uh, accounts you know, uh, the city level at the you know, but uh, usually it takes three years <laughs> to be able three to years? Pilot. Okay. Pilot parang yun. <laughs> pilot okay. parang yun. Just you need to see what's what's happening, look at test out. There's a lot of experimentation that's happening. But the question still is, do 
you really need it. I mean, uh, kasi baka mama, you, 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 you think you need it, experts think they need it, but there's no capacity to actually make use of it, you know? That's one. Second is, uh, so it, it needs to, to be, you know, because there will be a need for resources, human and financial resources. Second, regarding your point about the LGU sometimes having data that may be in va at variance with what the PSA may be saying, Part of it is because, of course, the PSA has surveys, no, and and supposedly the there should be some way of validating this before you know they release it at the national level. There's supposed to be several layers of data systems that the, the PSA does because, and even before PSA, the BAS used to do because they uh, of uh, issues about the reliability or the uh, of of their designs, their survey designs, which tend to maybe be more, give a, a better picture at the national, but not at the, at the local levels. So. But having said that, again, maybe I, I cannot speak for PSA because I'm, uh, I hope someone, someone can actually address your question more fully. But, uh, you know, the, the kind of um, discussions, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that PSA really needs to be going out of its shell and, and because it may be possible they're only having echo cham chambers. They're talking with their, with, with their friends and you know, and yung mga people like us who might be critical, who might say something, uh, we, may, we may not be heard because, uh, because uh, you know, pampagululong tayo daw or something, you know, but the reality is, uh, sana, you know, we, ha we, have to, we have to improve our, 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 our ways of partnering with each other, recognizing that each has a voice to say, and, and we may be able to give them some good suggestions to improve the quality of information that they're generating. And there may be things that you know that they don't, you know? I mean, so conversations should continue. You know? Pero unfortunately, uh, unfor uh, what I'm seeing right uh, the past few years was some of their technical committees, biglang nawala, no? tinanggal, ginawang IAC. Iba naman, technical survey and survey design, uh, technical committee and survey design, biglang tinanggal din. So, uh, so many of the, not just me, but many experts uh, in statistics lament these things because there are no ways for you to be able to have uh, conversations, uh, feedback mechanisms in place. And, and reportedly, in fairness to the new national statistician, there's going to be an attempt to, to have more technical committees and, and, and you know, advice from experts. But it's already middle of the year, you know, wala po yung narinig ko yun last year, pero hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin, you know. So uh, maybe again, part of it is because they're so overwhelmed. Now they're being pressed mm -hmm. with national IT. They have to conduct the census. They have to do so many, many, many things. So kawawa rin sila, no? <laughs> I have a lot of empathy for people who work at the PSO, including and most especially the national statistician. <laughs> Actually, to uh, Arlene, um, uh, we have a Facebook viewer who, who uh, expressed the same. Nawala ka, Sheila. Sheila, nawala ka. Um, Mike. Arlene. Sheila. Yes. Um, actually, we have we have a Facebook viewer who has uh, the same concern on uh, data gaps on uh, agri fisheries statistics. She said uh, there. Her name is, or his name is Senan Reyes, and he said there, there are data gaps as to agri-fishery statistics between the PSA and data of Provincial Agricultural Office and Industry Associations. So, yeah, this is a, <laughs> something really that must be addressed. Okay. Uh, Dr. Inesensio, would you have a follow-up question? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Mahar, I think, said something, no? The, uh, what are, you know, how feasible would it be to uh, capacitate, um, you know, even up to mouse maybe, because uh, PSA is in a way utilizing mouse back or in conducting surveys? I mean, no, they're not so, utilizing, but I think they, they uh, not, get not feedback at all. from their validation system in the mouse. I see. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, because if this, um, the, if the LGUs will be um, engaged and will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, used as partners and if in collecting data, then maybe they would better understand the data that they're collecting and would likely be, you know, be more comfortable in using the data. And, um, yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's why again we were. I was already mentioning that years ago in the, in the expert committee's report, the committee was already suggesting that there should be some kind of cross posting, the PSA or what was what we were trying to call as field stat, statistics Philippines at or stat field, statistics Philippines. Kaya lang ginawa PSA uh, would be would be cross posting, but making sure also that pag nikrenos post, these are quality people, no? yung cadre na tinatawag nila, the statistics cadre. Yeah. Be trained by PSRTI would stamp certification na, ah, mahusay ito, no? Uh, kasi baka mamaya, parang baka naman itatapon lang nila, no? <laughs> Pero baka naman, quality, they're supposed to be okay. a quality assurance. Dapat talaga ginagawa na yun. Eh hanggang ngayon, nakailan taon na, no? It's 2013 yung law. It's been seven years. It's still in the law. Uh, that was being put in the law, pero it, it did not get implemented, you know? And then, of course, on one hand, the, the PSA was say, arguing na, eh kasi wala pa nga kaming tao, pero kahit na wala silang tao, dapat they should have at least piloted it, and now it would be a good time to, to start piloting it, you know? Kung hindi nila yeah. ginawa dati, and I know it's been a co-observation also. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually also agree on sa uh, about the the provincial product account. There are there are how do you say that uh, governors who are um, uh, comfortable with uh, statistics and are actually using data in their in their planning. No, so one is uh, we had um, uh, we're doing a provincial product account for Bohol, and well, governor, uh, yeah. Of course, he was in government before, so he seems to be uh, comfortable with data. And you know, he he was very quick in picking up um, uh, from from the results or from the statistics presented things that could help them improve in their uh, in in formulating interventions for the province. So of course, yeah, not all the eighty six governors would probably would probably be like that, but. Uh, yeah, you are right. So you will just have then to wait for, if this is not the time, you know, <laughs> seek out this this uh, progressive governors and perhaps offer uh, or assist Make them. Assistance. In, yeah. yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Arlene. Thank you, Arlene. Hello. Okay. Um, our next question is from um, Attorney uh, Reverie Sapaen, uh, Director 3 of the National Economic Development Authority. Attorney Sapaen? Hello, Attorney? Hello. Hi, yes. Hello. Yes, you're, yes, go you're, ahead with your question, Attorney. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Yes, uh, you mentioned about um, uh, you, you earlier suggested that FILSIS should not be under the PSA, so what would the appropriate agency be? And you, um, if I understood correctly, you also spoke about uh, technical independence of the PSA. Can you elaborate more on this? And does this have something to do with its attachment for policy and coordination with NEDA? Thank you. Yeah, two, the two things. Um, the, the first thing uh, was uh, this mentioning of the. Sorry, uh, what was the first question again? I, I, nawala ako. Nalala. Sorry, sorry. That would be the FILSIS. Oh, the FILSIS, yes. Yes. Regarding the FILSIS, the, the suggest, I mean, the, 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 everybody among the experts that we we're talking with were saying, dapat hindi nilagay. But I think someone was suggesting. Na dapat it, this should be more a concern of BICT rather than NEDA, uh, NEDA agency. Because it's a registration system. It's it's a register. So uh, so in a way, unless there will be specific statistics that will be generated out of it, even civil registration, ganun din, no? It's a registry. So unless there are statistics coming out of the system, parang hindi yata dapat. No? Uh, second is uh, there there are also issues about the national ID. Because the national ID. I mean, mabuti sana kung hindi lang physical person, kundi even uh, businesses. There should be a business ID, you know? a register. Kasi ibang countries ganun ginagawa. But it is not a statistics office that's in charge of this. So uh, right now, if we were thinking of the national ID, at least for me now, the one that has the most coverage of information throughout the country will be PhilHealth na parang they've collected 99% 
of information about people, no? So, uh, very recent information kasi eh, uh, ginagamit, no? Yung, yung for the for field health, no? So, it would have made sense to me because sana may functionality yung issue kasi yung national ID. What will it be for? What will be a national ID for? Kasi if you think of a let's say an elderly person, meron na siyang OSCA or uh, senior citizen ID. Ano pang gamit niya for a uh, national ID? So, I mean, uh, these are things that you, it's, it's a question of incentives. So, dapat uh, it makes more sense that either a really new agency handle it. Uh, wag, parang ngayon kasi, just because, sige, good. Tapon mo sa P PSA dahil mukhang, oh, it's about data, it's about, no. But it's it's a little bit more, you know. It's not uh, it's not really going to, and, it, and as was being suggested already by Arlene and other people, nawawala yung focus ng PSA sa statistics, eh. Uh, so it makes more sense to really have it outside of PSA. At least that's what uh, the was mentioned by many of the experts. Second, um, uh, your your question about the independence, kasi, Everybody's always been grappling. Every statistics office throughout the world always want to be quote independent na parang hindi sila pinapakialaman kasi in other countries in fairness in here hindi naman nangyayari na pinapalitan yung data. Uh, nangyayari yan in other countries by the way, no. And in this country in fairness even during the Marco, Marcos time, hindi pinalitan ho ng, ng ang data as far as I know ng statistics offices. So it's important that they have that kind of technical independence. Kaya lang when you read through the law it was actually Dr. David who was pointing this out even nung, nung, hindi, hindi pa within this law, hindi na, within this study. No? I remember he was, when he was reading the, the actual statistics law, sabi niya, pakita sa nasa PSA board to uh, na, na parang they can, they, can, they can dictate certain things and because PSA board is chaired by the NEDA secretary, uh, there, there's, there's a big issue there na parang parang makikialam yung NEDA secretary with with actual operations which which should not be it should only be as far as policy is concerned pwede sa policy parang parang in the same way kunwari magkaroon ka ng methodology before you you come out with the statistics on poverty you can you can approve the the methodology in principle pero wag mo i-approve yung yung release itself because sa ibang country ganun no na parang bago i-release yung GDP ipapa-approve muna sa prime minister. Hindi dapat, ba? kaya nga dito sa in Philippines, we've always made it a point, bibigay mo sa presidente a day before. In fact, a few, uh, para lang for them to be able to think of what they should be saying relative to the the release. Pero ayaw mong ibigay too, too early because baka mamaya ipamagic sa'yo. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So our next question is from um, uh, Dr. Ronald Holmes, the president of Pulse um, Asia Research. And uh, since he can, yes, uh, he said uh, he's having problems with um, his microphone. So let me just read it. Uh, what is the possibility of, what is the possibility of getting the major HEIs together? in developing a joint program to produce more statisticians, similar to the joint graduate programs for various disciplines of UPDLSU uh, Ateneo de Manila in the 80s? Uh, yes. Ronnie, actually that, that program, believe it or not, was started by Dr. Mijares from a, a budget of statistics. Actually, they had a, a UNDP program to, to, to come up with uh, PhDs in statistics. Yung natitirang budget, <laughs> for na hindi ma magamit dahil walang walang nag apply ng PhD in statistics then in the 80s ko konti lang sila but we did have a few people graduate out of that program Ana Tabunda, uh, Lisa Bersales, uh, you know a few uh, a few of them but maram malaki yung budget hindi magastos kaya ang ginawa was they rechanneled it to actually produce PhDs in 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 the basic sciences mathematics physics biology chemistry and they became very successful no uh, but part of it was because all of these institutions were were working together and as far as i even remember kasi yung ibang mga naging naging estudyante from that program i remember they were also participating na nagkakaroon pa nga ng mga study groups no uh, para to 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 help them uh, get uh, get into the 
the, the PhD courses, no? understand more the, ano. These are things that dapat kalagang gawin, no? Kaya lang, unfortunately, walang, walang investments, no? We, we don't, we don't think of, in fact, ayan, even investments, I keep wondering why we keep having, oh, build, build, build. It's always just, uh, in infrastructure investments, uh, physical capital investments, but we forget that uh, uh, resources are not just about physical capital. Human resources are also worth investing. We should have a people-people-people investment. No? So I fully agree. I fully agree. Kaya lang question dyan is sino, sino na naman san, san gagas, san kukunin yung pera? Lalo na ngayon, eh, kung ano, nang, naghihingalo na. No? So, so san pa kaya kukunin na naman? Thank you very much for um, your, your question, Dr. Holmes. Actually, Dr. Holmes, your microphone is working. So would you have a, a follow-up question, sir? Uh, Holmes? Yes. No, that's OK. Thanks a lot for the response, Toots. Yeah, thanks, thanks sir. Ronnie. Thanks, Sheila. Keep safe. OK, thank you, sir. Same to you. Sheila, you got out. Okay. Our next question is uh, uh, from uh, Merwin uh, Salazar of uh, the Senate Economic Planning Office, CEPO. Okay. He already logged out. Uh, okay, so let me just read um, his question to us. Okay. How's the data privacy law affecting data collection and sharing in the public sector? Have you identified gaps in the law? And do you have specific recommendations on how best to address these gaps? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. In fact, there, there has been some issue that uh, right now, it's not just PSA, but many of the, 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 the government agencies seem to be misunderstanding that data privacy means uh, everything secret. You cannot share data. Because uh, we're, we're focusing too much on the law we're, without understanding that it's not about confidentiality. It's making sure that first we we build trust. Uh, I, I remember when you know two years ago when we had uh, somebody from Estonia coming over and, and talking about data privacy. He said that data privacy doesn't mean that if I go to a hospital uh, and I get sick, you know, get get you know get get some kind of treatment, that my doctor who is somewhere else will not be able to access what the records in that hospital. In fact, it's important for him to know. I give rule, no, issue is accountability. So the question nga dun is whether or not people can have ways to protect data privacy, but also understand what is actually data privacy about. It's not, it's making sure that people are not harmed. People making sure that, that you know, that there is trust, that we build trust in, in that we will not be misusing data. And I think, yun yung, unfortunately, I hope Sepo and, and the House uh, counterparts will start rethinking. You talk with people, government agencies. Ngayon, parang mas naging mahirap to get data. Uh, even kami, I mean, as researchers, to, tie, to always get information, sasabihin sa amin, ah, kasi data privacy. Yeah. Parating yun ang sasabihin ng mga tao sa researchers, and I'm sure even government agencies with each other, they don't share data. Sasabihin ba, even as simple as, Mare yung, di ba, yung attendance, <laughs> attendance during a training. Ay, hindi pwede mo ibigay yan ng copy kasi data privacy. Ayan, mga ganyan na. Ay, naku. <laughs> Thank you, Toots. We will less, uh, let you rest for a bit because our next question is uh, for uh, uh, Dr. Reyes. Mamsel? Okay. Uh, and the question is from... Uh, Director Dina De Jesus of the, um, I, I think this is the Dina De Jesus Pasagi that I know from the CPBRD or Congressional Planning and Budget Research Department. And she asked, may we hear the comments of Dr. Reyes on the CBMS role in granular, granular data collection, especially now that we have an, an enabling law? Amsel? Thank you for the question. I think uh, CBMS will be able to complement the data coming from PSA and other government agencies. Um, as we all know, it's still going to be LGU based, uh, driven, um, but with capacity building going to be provided by the Philippine Statistical System, meaning PSA, 
PSRTI and um, together with, with the ILG. So the, and I think this is related to a comment of Mahar. So the LGUs will have their own statisticians and will be trained in data collection using the CBMS methodology. And what will happen is that they will now have their own databases that they can use for formulating and implementing programs, particularly targeted programs. So um, for instance, for the social amelioration program, they can now identify who are the poorest in the community or for deaf ed programs who have access to internet or computers or TVs and radio. So um, it's not going, CBMS is not going to be a substitute for national surveys like the labor force survey and so forth. But I think it can complement by providing more granular data that would be very useful for targeted interventions. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Sel. Uh, we have a another um, question that, that you perhaps you can, you know, I'd, I'd like to throw this question to you as uh, the president of PIDS. And this is uh, from Dan Agustin of Masaganang Sakahan. Uh, he asked, um, how does PIDS come out or how can PIDS come out with sound papers if, if it cannot get accurate and timely data from PSA? Um, I, I think that's not, uh, uh, there are some challenges, some difficulties in get, getting data for some specific um, variables or items of information that we need, but we do have a um, well-established statistical system that generates you know, national income accounts, employment statistics, inflation, and so forth. But as we have emphasized, there are always new developments. So for instance, FIRE um, has dis disrupted you know, the, the current um, structure of the economy. And so we need, I think what this implies is PSS has to um, keep abreast with all of these developments and shocks. So like the COVID-19 pandemic is something that's new and we didn't expect that we would be requiring all of these items of information. And so um, I guess the, the, the lesson, the takeaway is that um, we need to um, be able to anticipate uh, what would be this emerging data needs in, in the same manner that the IDS tries to anticipate what would be important policy issues um, next year, three years from now, five years from now, and try to already conduct studies or um, uh, develop methodologies that could address these new developments. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Sel. So it's... Whatever, whatever Dr. Reyes said. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, I, no, but seriously yeah, yeah, but... I think, you know, you have all of these data systems. The only thing is, you know, you, we just need to be careful, as I already mentioned, about respondent burden. Kasi baka mamaya, you know, kakakondak pa lang census, biglang ito na naman. Tapos sabihin, ay, sila na naman! <laughs> you know, so, so I think you have to be a little bit careful and, and sensitive to people getting tired now. Although, of course, maybe they'll be a lot be tired seeing a new face, no? but uh, it's welcome to some extent. But then also, with all the different things happening, uh, we need to also ask ourselves, do we need, really need to collect data? But can we use other other means of information? Very interesting. They have uh, Google, Google information about uh, movements of people suggesting that we had much more than 50% of people not going, not, not, not really go getting out of their houses. Traditionally, ganyan. So parang movements of people are being tracked just with search engines. Kasi every time you, you bring your cell phone, you don't know that actually you're being tracked by Google. Kahit na nakapatay. <laughs> uh, hindi naman nakapatay. Basta naka, tawag dito. Kahit wala kang internet, na, na monitor ka pa rin nila. So those kinds of things. There are lots of alternative information that's, that's available that can, can, can signify the you know uh, things that that rather than putting yourself also at risk conducting primary data collection. Thank you. Let me j just backtrack to that C CBMS question because we have a follow up 
question on the CBMS uh, is from uh, Jack Reyes Cantos, uh, a Facebook viewer. He, uh, she asks, uh, will the anonymized uh, CBS, CBMS data be available to the public? The anonymized CBMS data. Uh, he, she's asking if it will be av available to the public. Um, I, I think uh, PSA is the lead agency now for the implementation of um, CBMS. CBMS. So I think uh, I hope that it will also become available to the public because, um, as Toots has emphasized, uh, there's a lot of data, but we have to make sure that data um, can be used uh, and um, and not one, not a single agency will be able to process all of the available information. So, for instance, for for PIDS now, the the interest is to use CBMS data for panel data analysis. So uh, there are so many things that could be done with it. So we're hoping that um, this is something that the CBMS, the anonymized CBMS data will be made available to all researchers and, and to the public. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Sel. Um, we have another uh, question from uh, a Facebook uh, viewer, and this is actually uh, for the PSA again, but Toots may have uh, some info about this and, and Ma'am Sel too. Is PSA consulted to improve the BSTATS curriculum in the Philippines? And does the agent does uh, PSA have scholarship programs for those with potential in STAT careers? Uh, the, as as regards STAT curriculum, the uh, it's not directly as an institution working with CHED. There is a technical committee on statistics of which I am a part of, as well as other people from the academe, uh, Dr. Barrios in particular for uh, from UP, UP School of Statistics, si Dr. Sita Albaseya from, from UP in Institute of Statistics at Los Baños, uh, Dr. Pacificador from uh, De La Salle University, and I think I, there's somebody from Mindanao, I forget who, uh, but lima kami, no? there, there are five of us, we're part of this technical committee on statistics that evaluates statistics curriculum and um, now uh, but going going to the curriculum at the high school level uh, i again together with a number of other people not just were, well we were we were not consulted with the curriculum ano na yon, no? uh, but we help prepare learning materials that will uh, that hopefully teachers would be able to use and they were made available for free to people. Kaya lang, pansin ko, in, in the regions, hindi rin ginagamit. For some reason, I'm not too sure. You know, it's free, but it's not being used. Uh, now, um, regarding scholarships, that would be ideal. You know, that PSA has some kind of scholarships that, uh, you know, if you know, have very good people, not just, not just in the government bureaucracy, but even, you know, even the private sector, academe, who, who have potentials and they could, they could uh, serve in the statistical system. That would be good. But right now, I don't think there are. There used to be. There used to be part of uh, that. That was still about twenty years ago when I was still part of the then SRTC. We had the, we had a program for that, and and I think they were trying to resurrect it, as far as I know, in the PSRTI because PSRTI is is supposed to be that's part of their mandate, giving even scholarships, but. Again, you know, resources wise, you know, to even to have a budget for a, uh, ano. So right now, I think the only scholarships are available are with UST. The merong statistics uh, course that if you want to specialize either masters or PhD, that's it. That's it. Pansit, you know. Thank you very much, Toots. Uh, we okay. We have a final. Question from Kim Pasete. Okay, and uh, she asks, is there a direction toward having household panel surveys? Uh, well, the former NSO, which is now part of the PSA, had some panel surveys that they experimented with. In 1997, the FIES, some of it, some of the households there were interviewed for the 1998 APs. But, and also, between 2003 to 2009, some, uh, one of the, uh, we have what's known as four, four um, replicates of the survey. 
one one replicate uh, a fourth of these households were tracked across across years now six years three, 2003 to 2009 however at that time while the panel data is very very uh, informative for for purposes of uh you know doing studies Acad academically it's it's very nice it's a very rich data source because you're able to look into dynamics and living standards but unfortunately uh, when I also examined this, there were issues because there was attrition happening, not just in the upper part of the income distribution, but even the lower part. So we don't get representative anymore across time. So I actually recommended that it, it that, that the panel be dropped, and I think uh, that was uh, that was that was uh, uh, that recommendation was was approved uh, by the then NSO. But now I don't know because dapat yan, if they're going to do a, a panel survey, it should be a separate one. I mean, other countries, they do that. They have panels, studies on living standards. So you, you don't mesh it with your regular surveys because it may be a little bit different, you know. So, so you have to be a bit careful when it comes to one of, because there, there are all these issues about attrition. And then suppose you have a household, uh, biglang naghiwalay nanay at tatay, may sarili ng pamilya. Uh, and then, uh, so who will be the panel then, you know? So there are all of these management issues of, of panel data that you have to be aware of. It's not easy. Uh, in other countries like Thailand, I remember they tried having a panel survey of their regular income and expenditure survey. One year later, 50% nawala. No? <laughs> uh, ng, for some reason, nagkaroon ng attrition. 50% just dropped out of the panel. So you have to be careful. Okay, we have a final question from Facebook. Um, and it's from uh, Malu Kabu Soriano. And uh, we would welcome the uh, response of uh, Dr. Reyes and, and Dr. Albert. Will all the mentioned issues or cons concerns and recommendations to improve the statistical system, is there a way PIDs can intervene or how can PIDS help raise these issues to the to national government agencies concern for them for them to address such concerns and consider the suggested possible solutions. Well, this webinar is a, a step towards uh, you know raising their consciousness. Thoughts, please, and then yeah. Dr. Reyes. Yeah, indeed, all of our policy studies at PIDS, you know, we do it because it's supposed to be useful, and in a way, it's an input. I mean, and for whatever it's worth inputs they can choose to ignore or they can choose to actually adopt them uh, all the government agencies are there to to sort of dwell and reflect on whatever we're saying uh, you know in a way whenever you do evaluation studies like this there's a danger that the agency may may think that oh you know we're, we're just trying to find find negative things about them but we're not we're here to, to provide suggestions, concrete suggestions. We're here to, 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 to show the facts, uh, the, the realities uh, from international assessments, as well as what their, their lo the local experts are actually saying about statistics in the country. And for whatever it's worth, you know, the, it's up to the agencies concerned to, to, to make sure that there is, that the knowledge gained from these kinds of studies uh, will be actionable I mean, we did give a lot of suggestions. We we now have a lot of people from CEPO, from you know uh, CPBD that attended this. Uh, you know, we hope there will be indeed legislators will also do a little bit of pressure to adopt certain things in amending amending the laws. But it's all up to the PSA and the PSRTI to 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 carry this forward. We we will be we will be here to help them if they want to. But if, uh, but it's up to them. Monsell? Yeah, if I can just add um, what uh, we at PIDS sometimes um, conduct pilot surveys. Um, if we're doing a particular study and there's no available data, what we do is we do primary data collection and um, we try to test whether a certain data collection instrument will be able to generate the um, needed information. So right now um, we're um, doing something on IPBPM um, in collab. We are going to start uh, this collaboration with the ICT to measure IPBPM um, sector. 
and um, just to share a personal experience that it takes a long time to um um to have a methodology that I've developed as one of the outputs of a PIDS project in the 1990s. And uh, the law institutionalizing CBMS was all was passed only last year. So um, it takes some time also to um, convince other stakeholders to adopt it. So we at PIDS at best probably could be to develop some, to, to show the need for certain information and also to pilot uh, certain data collection activities. And then if we think that it's really important, we recommend, as Toots mentioned, we recommend to the concerned agencies the adoption of a particular data collection system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mamsel. So at this point, please join me in thanking uh, Dr. Albert, Dr. Reyes, and all those who share the insights, um, give their comments um, in today's uh, discussion. Let's give them give, let's give them a big virtual clap. And of course, thank you to all of you for your active participation. So uh, just to wrap up our uh, discussion today has highlighted the immense challenges facing our statistical system. And um, it, our webinar, our discussion has, has unpacked these issues, but also discuss uh, possible solutions and ways forward, which include, um, among others, uh, the capacity building of human resources, uh, both in technical and uh, soft skills, increasing budgetary support, modernizing our ICT in infrastructure, and even a policy revisit of uh, the St Statistics Act. And the time to act on all these recommendations is now. The past months have put our country and the rest of the world in uncharted waters. And uh, as we try to recover from the adverse effects of the pandemic, and as we continue to uh, meet the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution, an effective statistical system becomes imperative more than ever. So at this point, may I, may I now call on our president, uh, Dr. Sailor Reyes, for her final remarks. Yes, I'd just like to thank, um, of course, our presenter today, Dr. Albert, and all the rest of the, the participants for having this, um, uh, I think, one of the more uh, active uh, um, discussions. Um, of course, thanks again to our webinar team led by Sheila Wang and uh, Gwen. Um, I call them the three musketeers because just the three of them mounting this weekly webinars. and. Um, and we're, we hope that the discussions that we've been having on the different topics um, will somehow um, influence or provide inputs to um, better improving um, um, our systems or discussions, uh, policy debates. Uh, we've noted in this particular case that the Philippine statistical system has actually done, undergone a lot of innovations and has um, um, introduced a lot of improvements. And we know that there will always be challenges. And so it's really very difficult to, to come up with these challenges, but we're sure that the Philippine statistical system with its able um, staff and leaders will be able to um, cope with not just with this uh, with fire but with the other challenges that will come up so thank you everyone for all your active participation thank you very much mamsel as before we close allow us to acknowledge the presence of our representatives from the following um uh, organizations from the following agencies uh the banco central and pilipinas um the bureau of animal industry commission and higher education council for the welfare of children the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Education, um, Department of Education, Agusan del Sur, uh, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Region 10, Department of Finance, Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Information and Communications Technology, Department of Labor and Employment, um, uh, DOLE, uh, Institute for Labor Studies, Department of Social Welfare and Development, Department of Trade and Industry, House of Representatives, uh, CTBRD, Department of, uh, I already mentioned DTI, right? Okay. 
uh, local government of San Simon, National Anti-Poverty Commission, National Economic and Development Authority, National Privacy Commission, National Tax Research Center, the Philippine Commission on Women, of course, um, uh, the uh, representatives from the Philippine Statistics Authority, um, academic institutions like the Ateneo de Manila de la Salle, uh, Philippine Normal University, Partido State University, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Siliman University, University of San Carlos, University of the Philippines, uh, NCPAG, University of the Philippines Los Baños, and uh, UP Population Institute, CSOs, uh, like the Kabalikat Para Sa Maunlad Na Buhay, the Philippine Association of Research Practitioners, Educators, and Statistical Software Users, the Alliance of Biodiversity, NCF, an international organization, and then Insights Philippines, Pulse Asia Research Incorporated, and the Social Weather Stations. Maraming salamat po for, your, uh, for attending this webinar. And uh, before we close, uh, just a few reminders. You can access the PowerPoint presentation of Dr. Albert from the PEDS website. Um, the link is flashed on your screen. screen. Uh, we will also you email. We will also email you the link after this webinar. Please also answer the feedback survey that will we will that will pop uh, in your screen after this webinar, and we will email you the link after the event in case you were not able to answer it. Your comments are very important to us to uh, improve our webinars. And lastly, please follow us. Please follow PIDS in our social media pages. We have a, um, a website, a Facebook account, and a Twitter account. So, friends, this ends our webinar for this week. Next week, June Aishina, 18. Just, just yes. One thing, uh, one thing sure. is just to remind them that, uh, that the full discussion paper is also available in the website. Thank you. Thank you very much, Toots. Yes, we will put that link also in the when we email all the participants the uh, the link to the uh, PowerPoint presentation um, after this webinar. Okay, friends. So this ends our webinar for this week. Next week on June 18, we'll talk about gender disparities in social protection coverage in the Philippines, and we hope you could join us again. So stay safe and stay healthy. Maraming salamat po.